most personal development guys talk about 100%, 110%, and I use that phrase myself too. What I When I use that though, I just mean that is a phrase in terms of just turning a phrase. I'm just saying like, go hard, do it, okay? I do not mean 100% of your human efforts, okay? This is because a lot of guys don't realize what 100% really is, okay? Working hard at 100% of your capabilities is 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day. That's like four or five hours to sleep and, and you know, maybe an hour and an hour and a half to, br- to groom and get to work and eat and brush your teeth and whatever it is you have to do. And I'm not joking with you, 18 hours a day. If you want to be an intern at Goldman Sachs, one of these major investment banks, that's what you can expect. They, hit a, they had a kid die last year at Lehman Brothers or one of the other banks. He was 17. They had a, he worked three hours, three days in a row, day and night, and he fucking died. And they had to institute a policy where 17 hours was the maximum, right? 17 hours now is the maximum. Right? Before that, it was more, they could have the kids working more than 17 hours a day. Okay, 17 to 18 hours a day, that is your 100%. Not 10 hours, not 12 hours, 18 fucking hours a day. That's 100%. That's what you're capable of, all right? That is serious shit, all right? You do not want to work 18 hours a day. I can tell you that. Though I've got all the respect in the world for those kids who are trying out for Lehman Brothers, and anyone who gets through that has my respect. I wouldn't want to do that. And I don't recommend you doing that because you need to have a somewhat of a life now, right? That is 100% living in the future. You need to have, be able to enjoy your life to some degree and not live in complete misery, okay? 50% of 17 hours is eight and a half hours a day, seven days a week, okay? That's 50%. Most people think that's 100%, right? Most people think, oh, I'm working eight and a half hours, I'm working seven days a week. I'm giving it 100%. No, you're giving it 50%. And that's what I recommend. Give it 50%. 50% is sustainable. 50% you can do and you can still relax afterwards. You can, you know, recharge and you can do that for 10 years. You can do that for five or six years. Try doing 18 hours a day for five or six years. You're not, you're, you're going to fall apart in every other area. Your health, your stress, you know, you're going to be, become really fucked up across the board. You have to factor in your overall lifestyle in terms of this shit too. So recognize that 50% is still eight and a half hours a day, seven days a week, okay? In the gym, 100% is 90 pounds of muscle. Every single one of you, you can put on 90 pounds of muscle. You just have to max out your genetic potential which is 45 pounds, and then you have to take TRT and TEST and DECA and Dianabol and EQ, and that will get you to like 65 pounds or 70 pounds. Um, But then to get to the next level, you need the insulin and the IGF-1 and the HGH, and some of those guys are using like inhalers and the caffeine and the ephedrine and the fucking everything, you know, what is, what is a guy who has 90 pounds of muscle on? He's on everything, right? I'm not talking about the fitness model. The fitness model's got 70 pounds or, you know, 65 pounds and he's just doing tests year round. And then he's taking a few cycles of like, um, you know, DECA and trend and whatever. But the 90 pound monster, is on all kinds of crazy shit. And you can get that body too. You just have to take an insane amount of dangerous fucking drugs. Okay? Insane amount of dangerous drugs. And the reason I say 50% is the sweet spot. Okay? 50% is the sweet spot in terms of success. Because after that, it becomes either diminishing returns whether where you're putting in a lot of effort, but you're not getting back the rewards that is worth the effort, counterproductive returns. Okay, if you're walking around with like 100 pounds of muscle, you will actually put off a lot of girls because you're going to be too big. If you're walking around with 70 pounds of muscle and you're and you look like a fitness model on the cover of a fitness magazine, you're going to get a ton of girls. But once you start getting into like that huge bodybuilder, you know, 100 pounds of muscle, you're going to actually start putting off women where it's counterproductive. 
or dangerous returns. You are fucking rolling the dice with your body when you start fucking around with insulin and all that shit. No disrespect to, to any of those guys who are competitive bodybuilders, anybody who has the discipline and, and takes the risks to get what they want has my respect. I'm not a hater. I'm just saying I don't recommend that lifestyle. Okay? Um, instead, okay, instead of 100%, which is 90 pounds, do 50%, which is 45 pounds of lean muscle. You can, most, some of you can do that naturally. I got up to like 38 pounds of lean muscle naturally with TRT, got me to about 45 pounds. Um, not advocating TRT. Check out my video on my experience with steroids and what I recommend. I'll never give you permission to do them. I'm just saying 45 pounds, um, a lot of you guys can get that naturally. And that's 50%. Okay, 90 pounds, 100%, way too much. It's gonna be counterproductive, it's gonna be diminishing returns, it's gonna be dangerous returns. Another example is 100% fashion. Okay, 100% fashion is you are wearing a $10,000 custom tailored suit on a Sunday. You ever see these motherfuckers wearing a custom tailored suit on a Sunday so they can go to Starbucks and stunt? I mean, you look ridiculous. You or like, you're mowing your lawn on a Sunday, you're wearing a custom tailored suit. That's 100%, that's like, that's like full on fashion, okay? It's full on fashion and your suit costs $10,000. You're spending a fortune on fashion and it's got to the point where it's counterproductive where people are gonna be asking you, why are you wearing, why are you wearing your suit on Sunday morning? Or, you know, why are you mowing your lawn in your fucking custom tailored suit? Or you grow one of these giant beards that a lot of guys are growing, okay? No disrespect if you have one of those beards, but that puts off like 50% of girls, okay? Yes, it's fashionable, but right away, 15% of girls are like, yes, girls like beard and a little bit of stubble, but 50% of girls are gonna be put off by that giant fucking beard. You're fashion forward, you're 100% there on fashion, but now it's become counterproductive, okay? The same goes for um, going 100% in on a niche, okay? If you're going 100% on a niche, Let's take, you know, the niche where you got the sleeve tattoos all the way down. You got the spacers, huge spacers in your ears. Okay, yes. For the 1% of girls who are in your niche, you are more attractive to them. But for 99% of the other girls, you become less attractive. Okay, you become less attractive because you're so polarized. And then you've got to think about, you know, you're going to age and you're going to have the sleeve tattoos and you're going to age with the big spaces in your ears. And what are you going to do about that when you're 35 or 40 and you want to have kids and stuff like that? It is, you've gone a hundred percent and it's become counterproductive. Okay. The same goes for like uh, super high fashion, super high fashion. You're spending an absolute fortune on fashion and a lot of the clothes they wear or they make, um, make you maybe come off as effeminate or have someone questioning your sexuality. No disrespect um, to you know, any gay people watching. What I'm saying is it is counterproductive. If you are trying to pick up girls and they think you're playing for the team, you are counterproductive. Also, if you're working a job like I did where you know, you're in sales or whatever, wearing just a suit that's tailor-made makes you stand out because a lot of guys don't dress particularly well, but if, you, if you've gone like way overboard with it, then the guys that you work with are gonna rip on you, right? They're gonna rip on you for being fashion boy or whatever. And you wanna look good, you wanna look better than the other guys, but you don't wanna go too far where, you know, they're, you become the office punchline type of thing, all right? Now, of course, you don't wanna work a job, but while you're working a job, these are things that you got to take into account, all right? So that's the decision-making phase. Part two is the building phase, okay? You made your decision, you've decided what you're gonna do, you've decided on the goals that solve your pain points, you've reality checked it, and you've gone into 50% of what's possible. Now you're doing the building phase, and in the building phase, the first thing you wanna focus on are Focus on the concepts that count, okay? I'm talking about focus on the big concepts before you start fucking around with the small concepts. If you ever start fucking around with the small concepts, okay? Let me give you an example. Take the gym. 
Here are the big four concepts. Getting adequate protein, which in my opinion is much less than most people say, it's 70 to 100 grams. Um, progressive resistance, which means you're going in and trying to get stronger every week. You're trying to do one more rep. You're trying to get stronger, progressive, progressively get stronger, okay? You get stronger, you will get bigger. When you're bench pressing 250, 300 pounds, you're gonna be very big, okay? Um, you know, getting adequate recovery, caloric surplus, and performance enhancing drugs. Whether legal, like caffeine, or creatine, or other. Again, not recommending any illegal drugs, but I'm saying those are the things that work. Those are the big four, okay? Progressive resistance, adequate protein, caloric surplus, performance enhancing drugs, whether legal or illegal, not recommending illegal drugs. Those are the big four, okay? Worried about meal timing, um, you know, BCAAs during your workout, uh, split sets, or all these, all this fucking white noise. No, you just need to get enough protein. You eat, need to eat slightly more than maintenance. You need to go in to get stronger every week and use whatever drugs are legally available to you or, you know, with doctor's prescription, TRT and stuff like that, or if you're in a country where it's legal. So those are the big four to focus on, okay? Not the fucking little shit. The little shit just gets in your way. I work out fasted every morning. I don't eat till noon. It's made no difference. Made no difference whether I had a meal before my workout or after, except that when I worked out before, I would actually have less energy because I wasn't on the caffeine, and I have more energy when I'm fasting, all right? You know, the exact ratio of food did not fucking matter, okay? What matters is I just had enough protein, and I'm just eating a bit more, and that got me to my natural max, all right?